In this video, I'll be showing all the space building upgraded fully, including what kind of knowledge you need or what type of leader is required. I know most of you have finished building your bases, but hopefully this video will help anyone looking to start a new community so that they can plan beforehand what type of knowledge they need or leader type they should choose. I display some text showing all the requirements, but words like electricity, power, and e electronics are pretty similar in meaning, so I put a star beside any knowledge required to make it less confusing while minimizing the amount of on-screen text. So just remember, star equals knowledge. Also, another confusing thing is what skill a specialization stems from. For example, if I say to you that you need knowledge of munitions, some people might not know that it comes from the base skill chemistry. So I put the link in the description to which leads you to a web page which provides you with that information halfway down the page. I want to mention also that you can build any leader specific building you want by changing to the leader required and every building will be fully functional even if you don't have a leader. At this time, the only way to change leaders is by exiling your current leader, then choosing another one. So what I have on screen here is just the buildings that each leader unlocks. They sort of tell you what each building does. It's not being very specific, but don't worry, I'll be showing everything in this video. For the command center, ignore the four armed guards, that's just part of the base. So the max out command center gives you four outposts. You can research new territories, which unlocks at level 2. You can increase your influence gained, and you can activate the spy drone and assault drone. If you're uncertain about what any of these things do, I, I covered the research territories at the end of this video, and for the drone hacking, I covered that in my assault drone demonstration video. A quick tip, because a lot of people say that they press a button and nothing's happening, that's because there is an activation time. For example, the drone hacking for me takes 16 minutes to activate, so you won't get that right away. To upgrade to farm three, you'll need a trader, knowledge of agriculture, and water. You get four food per day as long as you keep the knowledge of agriculture. You can double the food production with seeds, create a gardening textbook, and convert to meds production if you have knowledge of gardening. You need water and power to build the hydroponics and keep it functioning. You get 3 food per day. You can double the food production with seeds and convert to meds per day if you have knowledge of herbalism. You need knowledge of agriculture and water to get garden level 3. You get 3 food per day, you can double your food production, can create a gardening textbook, and you can switch to meds per day if you have knowledge of gardening. The important differences between a hydroponics and a garden are the hydroponics can be built indoors or outdoors, the garden only outdoors. The garden needs to be upgraded to have the same amount of food as the hydroponics. The garden only needs the base gardening skill to convert to meds, whereas the hydroponics requires the herbalism specialization. You don't need anything special to build the staging area. The staging area removes all material upkeep costs for your facilities, you can also use parts to buy an increase in build speed. The trade depot lets you call in a trader for each resource, as well as a parts trader. It also gives you 200 influence per day. All you need is a trader to build this. I think by now you understand the structure I'm using for each summary, so I'm going to stop telling you the requirements needed because you can read the on-screen text. Onto the storage. Taking a look at the fire safe storage first, you get 35 storage for food and meds, and 55 storage for ammo and fuel. The storage functions down here are the same for all storage types. You can withdraw a rucksack. Quick tip, you can withdraw the rucksack from anywhere, and the rucksack will teleport onto your back. You can, tell, you can convert one ammo resource into random caliber bullets. You can also convert one fuel resource into a gas can. And finally, you can convert one material resource into parts. You can also convert this storage building into other storage types as long as you meet the requirements. So for the heavy duty storage, you get 55 storage for materials and 35 for the other resources. Refrigerated storage, you get 35 for materials and ammo and 55 for food and meds. The auto shop provides better fuel efficiency and lets you craft vehicle upgrade kits. I forgot to click the button, but it's just the light, medium, and heavy upgrade kits. 
You can also purchase impact reduction and loudness reduction. The rain collector gives you plus one morale and lets you activate base wide water. The kitchen lets you ration food, spend food to increase max stamina and morale, create stamina related consumables, and convert food to seeds. Outdoor beds gives you three beds at the cost of one morale, and that's just switching characters. Sheltered beds also gives you three beds, but there's no morale penalty. Ignore the eight beds, that's just the built-in barracks in Container Fort Base. The upgraded barracks gives you six beds, and you can convert this to a Spartan barracks or luxury barracks. The Spartan Barracks gives you 8 beds at the cost of a bit of morale. The Luxury Barracks provides a huge morale boost at the cost of one less bed than the normal barracks. The Fighting Gem gives you more fighting and cardio experience rate, plus 20 max health. You can train your fighting and cardio at the cost of resources, as well as reduce fatigue severity. For the Shooting Range, you get more shooting and wits experience rate, as well as plus 20 max stamina. You can train your shooting and wits. At the armory, you can get better accuracy, craft any type of ammo you want, craft professional muzzle attachments, and you can craft military explosives. If you have an infirmary, your inactive characters will automatically heal. Injuries and infections will be removed over time. By infection, I mean the bar that goes up before you get the blood plague. If a character gets the blood plague, you can use this function to stop the timer from going down for up to three people. You can craft healing items and plague cures. Quick tip, selling the bulk cure gives 500 influence, so if you have the resources, it's a great way to obtain influence. Here are just various ways you can heal or treat infection. Minus a couple things, the field hospital is exactly the same as a max level infirmary. The additional perks that a field hospital has is plus 10 max health and the ability to heal your whole community's injury and trauma or infection. Not the blood plague though. I've never found the need for these extra options, so the only reason I get the field hospital is for the 10 plus 10 max health. To bust any myths, I have the effects of each side by side. Ignore the plus 500% injury recovery for the infirmary because that's from a mod, but as you can see, the numbers are the same. The generator gives you plus 5 morale and you can activate base wide power at the cost of fuel. The latrine provides plus 10 morale and you can add another 10 morale for 46 minutes. The lounge gives you plus 2 beds plus 15 morale, and plus another 5 morale if you have knowledge of the arts. You can also add more morale at the cost of labor and more zombie threat. And you can also train your skills. From my experience, this gives 1 star for each skill, for the base skill, not the specialization. For the specialization, it's probably like a third of a star. The forge lets you craft melee masterwork weapons which aren't that good to be honest, but they're decent if you don't have anything better. You can convert materials to parts and parts to materials. The only thing useful about the sniper tower is the sniper cover radio function. Here's some gameplay. So it costs 50 influence, lasts one minute, 30 seconds, and has a 10 minute cooldown. I find it's more practical at least than the artillery or drone strike. The solar array provides silent base wide power and plus 5 morale. The still 2 gives you plus 3 morale. You can convert food into fuel, food to ethanol, and then ethanol to whiskey, which is a decent way to earn money, especially if you go AFK a lot. And then you can also get base wide water. 
The watchtower just reduces zombie threat. You want to have at least two people with equipped with uh, firearms to get that negative two zombie threat. I don't know why I have the workshop last, but here you go. Here you can craft explosives as long as you have the knowledge. There's also the toolkit and the quick prepare toolkit. You can craft handmade attachments. Some mods. And finally you can salvage weapon remains. That's it for the maxed out facilities. I'm just going to quickly explain what it's like to change maps. So you'll need a com at least a command center level 2 to unlock the research new territory option. After you click on it, you'll have to wait some time for it to finish. The time depends on your global action speed which is affected by your morale. It took me 15 minutes. After the time's up, check your map as there will be two large yellow icons indicating the maps you can change to. Decide which map you want to change to and you'll need to be physically be at the location of the yellow circle. Once you get there, a message will pop up. After you confirm, you'll lose all your cars, including the one you're driving. You keep everything else though. You will keep all your survivors, the influence cost of your base and material cost of your facilities will be refunded, including things like circuitry. All you have to do now is find a new base and quickly use your materials before they slowly disappear due to not enough storage. Guys, thank you for bringing me to well over a thousand subs. Most of you are probably here for the content, but for those who want to know more about me, feel free to ask any questions you want and you might be featured in my self-introduction video. Wink wink. Be sure to hit the like button if you found this video helpful and consider subscribing. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.